Good morning, lovely people. Today, I would like to talk about parasites. And when we talk about parasites in aquaculture or in aquaponics or even in gardening, we are thinking of basically parasites on the fish and on the plant that can affect the health of the fish. But we almost never think about the parasites that can affect humans. And that's what I would like to talk about today. People are scared that the bacteria from the fish waste could contaminate the crop. And as I explained in a previous video, there is no risk from this perspective. That's why aquaponics is uh, quite safe. However, when you consume fish, you must be aware that there are a number of parasites that can live inside the fish. Most of them, they are in a worm shape. The most famous of them is called Anisakis. They live inside the, the, the fish, but the fish is not the aimed host. They aim for the big mammals, you know, for the seals and the sea lions, for the whales. So the fish is just going to be a transition. You got some little parasite larvae that are into the water. They are eaten by some very small fish and the small fish get contaminated. Basically, the larvae, instead of being digested into the tummy of the fish, they are, they are able to resist, to survive, to extreme pH. So when they are into the fish belly, uh, they are not digested and they are able to puncture the tummy the belly and to go into the tissue. So very often they go into the internal organs. They can also go in the flesh. And of course it will affect the fish, but most of the time it will not kill the fish. Of course if there are a lot of them, the fish will die eventually. But very often the fish is able to survive, but it weakens the fish a bit. And the fish has got chances to be eaten by bigger fish by predators, because the fish is a bit weaker than the others. And that's how those uh, worms, they go from one fish to another, they end up in the bigger fish, and eventually in the big mammals. So again, I'm talking about the seals, I'm talking about uh, sea lions, otaris, and whales. As you can understand, the, the sea mammals, they are warm blood animals and their biology is very close to human biology. So if we consume those worms, if we consume those parasites, they will be able to survive in our organism, in our body, to puncture the, the digestive system and to go into our internal organs and even in our muscles. And the consequences can be dramatic. This is a problem that is uh, completely underestimated. I personally participated to a study in France. The aim of the study was to find out if some species of fish were more affected and some areas were more affected around the world. And the results we found was that some fish had more chances to be affected, but all species from all around the planet had chances to get parasites. But the thing to understand is that those parasites, if they are cooked, they are dead. If they are frozen, they are dead. So there are ways to minimize the impact of those parasites. Because once they are dead, they are not going to develop in your body. However, 
the protein, the skin of the, of the parasite, can be a source of allergy as well. So some people are allergic to, <laughs> to the parasite of the fish, but it doesn't have the same magnitude, the same impact. You get very few people who are allergic to parasites, while everybody, every single human, if you consume a live parasite, the parasite will be able to develop in your body. So we need to be aware of this risk. And I'm talking about wild caught fish. Now what happens when you go to a sushi place, a sushi bar? Well, personally, I don't like those places. I'm very scared of it because I think we completely underestimate the impact of parasites on humans. And uh, some sushi places are very good. They work with fish that has been frozen and thawed back. So if the fish is frozen for 48 hours, then the parasite is, is killed. So it's a really good way. That's why when I go fishing and when I go spear fishing, I never consume the fish straight away when I want to eat it raw, because I love raw fish, not all species, but mainly the big pelagic, the big swimmer, swimmers. Um, I like to consume them raw, but I always freeze the fish before for 48 hours. When you freeze the fish, you lose a lot of vitamins, unfortunately. But you lose some vitamins, but at least you, your food is safe. So, you know, it's a bit of a catch-22. You can't win from all perspectives. Well, there is one way to win, and I will detail it. And that's where we come to aquaponics. But what I want you to understand is that when you go to a sushi bar, if the fish hasn't been frozen, and if it's a white coat fish, it's tuna that hasn't been frozen, for instance, you shouldn't consume it. But I hope that most sushi places consider this problem seriously. Because it's a really serious problem. So now when we come to aquaculture, the study we did uh, included some fish from fish farms. And we found zero parasites on the fish from fish farms. And if you understood what I just said before, how the parasites grow and develop into the fish, you understand that the, the chances to have parasites in, in a farm fish is very low. And the reason is because when we feed our fish in aquaculture, in a farm, we use this type of fish food. And here you don't have any parasite. It's a fish food that is dry and cooked. When it's a white coat fish, the fish has eaten all the fish. And so the parasite had the chance to move up in the chain. So in farm fish, you can eat farm fish without cooking them. The parasites, the chances to have parasites are extremely low. You will need to have some small fish that are affected by the parasite to go inside the cage where the other farm fish are grown and to be eaten by the farm fish, which can happen, but the chances are quite low. So, you know, it's always a question of probabilities, of risk and chances that we take. And I, I consider, and it's scientifically considered, scientifically considered, that uh, farm fish is safe from parasite perspective, but not the white coat fish. So if you want to eat sushi, go for, go for salmon, trout, or any fish that has been farmed. But if you eat white coat sushi, white coat fish, you should freeze the fish for 48 hours or making sure that it's been frozen before. So when we come to aquaponics, you understand that there are no chances to have parasites here or the chances are extremely, extremely, extremely low. Because we feed our fish with dry food and it's not a completely open ecosystem. The ecosystem is quite small. So those type of ecosystems are not affected by anisakis parasites or those type of worms, parasites. So that's why having fish in aquaponics is a good thing as well because 
is quite safe. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't eat white codfish. I love white codfish and I, I love going fishing and spear fishing. But um, when we grow fish at home, it's a bit safer and we can consume the fish raw without having to freeze it, which means that we can consume all the vitamins. We don't lose anything. So I think it's a real plus. I will now show you some seedlings that I'm growing in the shed. And if you want to learn more about aquaponics, you are really welcome to join the aquaponics revolution movement. There is a link below the video in the description. And you can, uh, you can, uh, you can join the movement there. And as soon as you join the movement, you will have access to a welcome package where you receive some critical information about aquaponics, what are the critical limits to respect, how does aquaponics work, the so general principle. You know, some very important information if you really want to, if you are serious about aquaponics and you want to start to grow your own food in your own backyard. We had over 10,000 people who joined the community already. So if you want to be one of us, you are really welcome. The link is into the description. And now we will go and uh, have a look at the seedlings that I have been growing because we are still in winter here in Australia. So I'm just preparing for the end of winter and beginning of spring. Uh, by the way, you know that I, I built a, a pergola. I was working on a pergola. So now it's kind of done, as you can see. Oh, yeah, I need to tidy up. I need to put a find a nice table in to put here. But you see, we finished the pergola. It took us a uh, few weeks. Well, not few weeks of full work, but just a few hours here and there. And... Um, yeah, you see this area here, I will probably put a barbecue and hopefully a little aquaponics setup. When we look at the trees, you can see that the fig tree here is almost coming. You see that's, that's here, that's the fig, fig tree. So we can see that it's kind of opening. I'm very happy with it because uh, I just planted them beginning of winter so I'm happy to see it coming back see this one as well it's got some buds and this one is open so this one is a um, persimmon as we call it in English or khaki and here they say fuyu but you see it's uh, it's coming I love seeing the trees flowering you know I love aquaponics and I I like to share about aquaponics because I like growing fish and plants. But for me, if you really want to be sustainable, one of the good ways is to, is to grow some trees. Those trees are producing a huge quantity of food without much effort at all. So I think it's always a good thing to, to grow trees in your properties. Um, they will produce for you heaps of food that you can share with your friends and neighbors. And uh, without much effort at all. So that's why I really recommend trees. So here I planted yesterday some, uh, some seeds of basil, basil and, uh, and lettuce. And there, you see, it's just underneath the roof. This is a water tank, right? So we are just above the water tank. And there I have some seedlings. I will, uh, I will show you a bit closer. There we have some seedlings of um, silver bits. So 
So every morning I spray a bit of aquaponics water on it. And that's really the perfect environment for them. And here was the old coop that I was using. I didn't really like this one. It was too low, too small for the, for the chicken that I had, for the hands. So the new one is uh, much better, but I made a, a video to talk about this. Chicken are way more happy. It is going to be a very nice day here. So I will enjoy and I hope you do too. I hope you have a lovely day. You do something today, you grow some food wherever you are. Aquaponics or not, doesn't matter. As long as you do something, you produce some food. You move from being the consumer to being the producer. You don't have to produce everything you consume, but just a little bit and then you can improve every day. So everybody, I wish you a lovely day and I see you in the next one. Bye bye.